Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to The Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over. On this podcast, we talk about everything from dating and relationships to personal development. We also speak very candidly about the F word, and by that, I mean failure. So grab a pen, tag a friend, and let's talk about it. All of it. Undergoing, overcoming, and simply trying to make it through. Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to the Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over podcast, and I'm your host, Kayla. If you are just listening for the first time, then I want to say hello and welcome to my platform. And as always, if you are a returning listener, hey, sis, welcome back. So for the entire month of October, we have talked all about authenticity, and I've talked everything from curating authenticity to ways you may be self-sabotaging to habits to unlearn and how to learn to rest. I've literally hit the ground running and gave you all sorts of nuggets. And so in today's episode, I want to dive into a question that I receive monthly, at least dozens of times a year, and it is... How did you become that girl? Like, how did you become her? Now, I know, I know. You guys are grabbing your pitchforks. There's weeping. There's gnashing of teeth. Like, who are you to just decide that you're that girl? And that's exactly who I am. I'm the decider. You see, I get to decide the trajectory of my life, and you get to decide the trajectory of yours. One morning, I literally just woke up and decided that I was no longer settling for things that I did not deserve. I was no longer settling for less than I could not stop dreaming about. I was no longer just going to tolerate things and be like, oh, well, this is just how my life is. No, I decided that I was going to do the work and make the changes and not stop until I was proud. And so hopefully these six steps that I'm going to share with you today will allow you to do the same thing and you will be that girl too in no time. So let's dive right into it for all of you who are watching on replay. Grab your pen, tag a friend, and let's dive into it. And if you are driving, there will be no taking notes right now, sis. Just watch it on the replay. I promise that it will serve and support you in the same fashion. For starters, we get to develop and master the art of discipline. The art of discipline. My emotions were so wild and so out of check. Like I knew I've always been a nice girl, but now I'm more so a kind girl because I learned how to be assertive and I learned how to channel all of that energy and to stop being so in the moment. I learned the the art of delayed gratification because discipline is when we are able to delay what we want right now for what we want in the future. And this came down to every single space in my life. It was spiritual. It was physical. It was emotional. It was mental. It was learning that I did not always have to be right and that I did not have to have the last word. Sometimes you recognize in the middle of a conversation with someone that they can't hear you. They can't hear you because they're not listening. They're listening to respond. Sometimes you realize you're the one who's listening to respond. And I learned to be okay with saying, all right, maybe you're right. I'll look into that. And letting it go. Not feeling like like I got one-upped on or done in. Like, right? It's just like, okay. I don't want to continue this conversation. Learning that everything isn't worth my effort or energy doesn't, you know, require a response from me. Some things are beneath me. It's just, I'm not getting into that. Learning that and truly mastering that. But not only in conversations with people, in relationships. I walked away from a seven-year relationship and an engagement because it was less than I deserved because I was not happy. I was not being fulfilled. I felt empty inside. And I knew I did not want to do that for 30, 40, 50 years. It's like, you know what? I can cut my losses now. And yes, right now I want to be a wife. Right now I want to have a wedding. Right now I want to be married. But more importantly, long term, I want to be committed and I want to be loved and I want to be cherished and I want to be valued. And none of those things are happening right now. So you know what? It's time for me to learn to wait. I learned discipline through my dining and my meals. And I learned that when I don't eat the way that I'm supposed to eat, then I gain excessive weight. Now, I know 
When people see a smaller person state, oh, I'm gaining weight, everybody wants to roll their eyes. But literally in a two-year time span, I gained about nine and a half pounds, which is more than I've ever gained since high school. And so for me, that was a lot. For me, that was pulling on clothes and not feeling like myself, not feeling comfortable, not feeling sexy in my skin. And so I had to dial things back and get back on that meal plan because long term, I want to be healthy. Long term, I want to pull on my clothes, pull on my dress and be like, yes, I am that girl. But that was a me thing. That was not society. That was not anybody else. That was a Kayla thing where Kayla got undisciplined and Kayla paid consequences for that. Where in your life can you get more discipline? Where can you get tighter on what's going on with you? The last place that I would say that is in my business. I have been running for a long time, guys. I started my business in 2020 and I have dabbled in lots of things, but coaching seems to be where my soul gets set on fire, right? And that came with hosting consistently. That came with getting into coaching myself and learning the ropes and what I needed to do and surrounding myself with different people. And it wasn't always, and it's not always, what I want to do. But it's what I have to do because, as I say to my clients and patients frequently, sometimes we do what we have to do so that one day we can do what we want to do. So where can you get disciplined? All right, I'm stepping off of that soapbox. We're moving on to number two, which is practice passion over playing it safe. Practice passion over playing it safe. Now, I say this as a highly educated person. I did go to school. I got an advanced degree. And Read up the rungs in corporate America. However, comma, my passion has always been that I have a servant's heart. I love to help people. I love to aid people. And I know for me, and I'm sure other women out there, we get stuck in our corporate jobs because this is what I've always done. This is the field I've always worked in. This is where I know things. And we're afraid to branch out. We're afraid to ask for the promotion. We're afraid to start the side business. We're afraid to go to nail tech school or to cosmetology school or to become an esthetician. We're afraid to start the skincare business. We're afraid to do the thing that we're passionate about because it's safer over here in our nine to five in corporate where people know that we know what we're talking about and they stick with that. Whatever your passion is, it's not going to let you sleep. It's still nudging. It's still tugging. If you have something inside of you, it could be a book. It could be a business. It could be a marketing plan. It could be anything. If you have something tugging inside you, odds are that's because that's what you're supposed to be doing. Now, I'm not saying rush out and quit your nine to five, but find a way to pour into yourself and to pour into your passions and to release that inner feminine creativity. See, you only have so many years left on this on this planet. And it would make so, so much sense for you to be happy in addition to making an income, right? Like who wants to spend their life hitting a clock, working for someone else's dreams while yours lay dormant? It's unacceptable. So figure out how you can chase your passion instead of always playing it safe. Number three, level up your self-talk. No, seriously, stop talking down on yourself. I want you to start talking to yourself the way that you talk to a friend. Your words have power. You guys know that I'm a believer and biblically, it says the power of life and death lie in your tongue. They lie in your tongue. Stop calling yourself stupid. Stop saying that you're ugly. Stop saying that you're broke. Stop claiming those things and calling them into your spirit. We don't do that over here. Also, stop apologizing for your feelings. Why are you sorry that you're sad or that you're crying? Why are you sorry that you're angry? Why are you sorry that you're advocating for yourself? Stop that. Absolutely not because you're worth it and your feelings matter. Who you are matters. What you have to say matters. Never, ever think that it doesn't. Also, the other thing that I've incorporated is I have started saying thank you at work instead of I'm sorry. So if I'm running late for a meeting, I'll say thank you so much for waiting for me. Or if someone catches a grammar error or something in an email, I'll say nice catch. I appreciate the teamwork. Instead of being like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know why? Because I'm a human. I'm entitled to make mistakes. I'm entitled for things to not always be perfect. And instead of beating myself up or allowing this pity party for my comma splice, I just say nice catch. And you keep it moving. 
That right there, when you start to turn that energy where you do not allow yourself to talk down on you and you don't let, allow other people to talk down on you, that is going to start that that girl energy. Like if someone is making a joke about you or someone is talking down to you, you get to say, you don't get to talk to me like that. Or I'm not going to tolerate that. If you continue to speak to me in this way, I'm not going to keep having lunch with you. You start setting those boundaries, sis, and I promise that girl energy, it just oozes out of you, oozes out of you. Number four is get ready, boo. Even if it's just for you, get ready every single day. I know that we are in an endemic, like we're coming out out of the pandemic and things are back where people are going out and they're getting dressed and they're going to concerts and going to dinner. So many of us fell into this slump where we just wore joggers and t-shirts and a you know, messy bun all the time. I made a conscious effort every single day to get dressed, get dressed. Now, it wasn't the whole time. Do not get me wrong. <laughs> I did, though, decide about midway through that I was struggling. I was struggling because I'm a social butterfly. I was missing that interaction with my friends. I was missing all these things because I worked in a hospital. So who was the biggest threat to my friends? Me. And so I stayed away from a lot of people. but. I got really seriously busy with making videos, making content, reaching out to my social media network. And I always got up. I put on clothes. Even if they were lounge clothes, they were super sassy and they matched. And I got really nice materials and beautiful colors. And I did my hair and I did my makeup. I made sure that I was showing up for me. That process taught me that I don't have to get dressed to impress you. I'm getting dressed to impress me because I'm worth it. So every single day, sis, I want you to get ready um, and do this in every area. So number five is to create uh, that girl habits, that girl habits. So I can move into do this in every area. Okay. And so I want you to imagine what that girl looks like for you. If you were that girl, what would you do? What would you do? So for me, it was getting my nails done. It was making sure my hair is done. It was uh, incorporating a or incorporating a killer skincare routine where like I have literally the whole line. Do I use it every day? Absolutely not. But I have a good skincare routine. I invested in quality makeup. I invested in clothes that I love. Why are you wearing clothes that you don't like? Even if you're a thrifter, Google, look around, ask people, where are the best places for me to thrift? Um, if you are a girl who wants to get her nails done, you're like, hey, well, that's not really in the budget. Consider the local beauty school or just get a manicure with gel polish. Like you do not have to go the whole 10 yards. All you have to do is create space for you to be pampered, for you to be loved, for this is my time for me. That right there, sis, is that girl energy, creating that girl habits. Um, the other thing I do is, I have really sassy and satin pajamas and, you know, silk sheets. And I, you know, in, invest in like a spray for my, a linen spray for my bed. Like make sure that you are creating an ambiance and these habits that support that you are that chick. You don't have to wait until you're married or wait until you have a long-term partner to start wearing cute pajamas to bed and spraying the bed down. Do that now. And so when you meet him, or her, it's already a process. It's already something that you do. It's not a new habit because if you wait, it'll be something that you do for like the first two, three months. And then you forget that that's what you do. So just start now, literally start now. And then lastly, what I would say to do is invest in yourself, invest in your mind, invest in your personal growth, invest in your development, because when you start to recognize your own toxic traits and heal them, you are unstoppable. There is literally nothing you can't do when you are willing to say, I need to make a change here. I need to do better there. I need to learn and unlearn these processes. There's nothing that can't stop you, right? Or nothing that can stop you. Invest in your mind. You're like, Kayla, I'm busted broke. Okay, binge my podcast, jump on Facebook groups, jump on a course, books, literally all kinds of ways are available at your fingertips. But at some point, you got to get some skin in the game and make the investment. This year alone, investing in coaching and jumping into the top tier with my coach has transformed my life. 
because I had skin in the game. I was paying attention. I'm, I've got my notes section, you know, I've got my notes up. I'm typing, I'm listening, I'm asking questions, I'm answering questions, and I'm putting in the work. Why? Because it costs me. It costs me. Now, I'm not saying that you can't binge free content. By all means, do whatever fits. But at some point, at some point, you got to launch out into the deep. And I promise I'm the evidence that it changes the game. I love you, girl. I want the best for you, girl. I hope that something that you heard today will help you to channel your that girl energy and that you will start seeing the transformation that you can't stop dreaming about. Have a great one and we'll talk in the next one. Well, gorgeous girl, that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you found value, insight, or strength. I hope something was said that gave you the courage to push on a little while longer toward the life of your dreams. If you felt motivated during this segment, screenshot this and throw it in your stories and tag me on social. That way we can keep the message going. Have an excellent day on purpose and we girl will talk in the next one.